to St. Peter's Episcopal Church, a little church with a big heart. We're so glad you're here this toasty summer Sunday. Uh, if it's your first time here with us when it comes time for communion, just we're going to line up at the rail here. Uh, I will come by with bread. Someone else will come by with wine. You can either dip the bread in the wine, which is called a tinkting, drink directly from the cup, or let the cup pass you by. All three are viable options. If you are not baptized and like blessing, you just brush your arms over your chest like so. St. Peter's Episcopal Church is situated on land that was lived and traveled on by many different tribes, including the Hohokam, the Aahukam the Sobopuri, and the Akamel Aahukam. We respectfully acknowledge and honor all tribal communities, past and present, for their ongoing and fundamental relationship with this land and this region. At this time, I'd like to ask that you silence your cell phones and take a minute to quiet your heart and your mind as you prepare for worship. Thank you.
Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. verses 12 through 17 and 22 through 25. Now the sons of Eli were scoundrels. They had no regard for the Lord or for the duties of the priests to the people. When anyone offered a sacrifice, the priest's servant would come while the meat was boiling with a three-pronged fork in his hand and he would thrust it into the pan, kettle, cauldron, or pot. All that the fork brought up, the priest would take for himself. This is what they did at Shiloh to all the Israelites who came there. Moreover, before the fat was burned, the priest's servant would come and say to the one who was sacrificing, Give meat for the priest to roast, for he will not accept boiled meat from you, but only raw. And if the man said to him, Let them burn the fat first, and then take whatever you wish, he would say, No, you must give it now. If not, I will take it by force. Thus the sin of the young man was very great in the sight of the Lord, for they treated the offerings of the Lord with contempt. Now Eli was very old. He heard all that his sons were doing to all Israel, how they lay with women who served at the entrance to the tent of the meeting. He said to them, Why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all these people. No, my sons, it is not a good report that I hear, the people of the Lord spreading abroad. If one person sins against another, someone can intercede for the sinner with the Lord. But if someone sins against the Lord, who can make intercession? But they would not listen to the voice of their father, for it was the will of the Lord to kill them. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks to God. God. The song today is Psalm 49. We will read responsibly at the asterisks. Hear this, all you peoples. Hearken, all who dwell in the whole world. You will cry and dream of the Lord, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb, and set forth my riddle upon my heart. Why should I be afraid of evil days? When the wickedness of those of my enemies surrounds me. The wickedness of those who put their trust in their goods. And the boasts of their great riches. We can never ransom ourselves. Or deliver to God the price of our life. For the ransom of our life is so great. That we should never have enough to pay it. In order to live forever and ever. And never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also, like the dull and the stupid they perish, and leave their wealth to those who come after them. Even though honored, they cannot live forever. They are like beasts that perish. Such is the way of those who foolishly trust in themselves, and in the end of those who delight in their own words. Like a flock of sheep, they are destined to die. Death is their shepherd. They look down straightway and destroy Their form shall waste away, and the land of the dead shall be their home. By, but God will ransom my life, and will snatch you from the grass of death. Do not be envious when someone becomes rich, or when the rich earn their house riches. For they will carry nothing away at their death, nor will their avenger follow them. Though they thought highly of themselves while they lived, and were praised for their success, they shall join the company of their forebears, who will never see the light again. Those who are honored, but have no understanding, are like the beasts that perish.
epistle today is from 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verse 6 through 16. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endure, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, it is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and external dominion. Amen. And eternal dominion. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel Good news to the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord our God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The scriptures today are fairly obviously about money and wealth. But there's a couple things that often get misinterpreted in the scriptures, and I'd like to point them out. The first is that in the gospel, many people see this as saying, Jesus is saying you can't have wealth and serve God. It's not what he says. He says you cannot serve God and wealth. And Paul goes on to clarify a little bit more in 1 Timothy. And he says, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, which I'm sure you have probably heard as the love of money is the root of all evil. Not the same expression at all. Paul is, is taking what Jesus said a little further. He's saying you can't love money because if you do, it's going to take over your life and you're going to fall into temptation and be trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that will plunge you into ruin and destruction. He says, instead, forget about loving money. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. But what he doesn't say is get rid of all your money. This is not what these readings say. All of these readings, the Old Testament, the Psalm, the Epistle, the Gospel, all of them are not saying if you have wealth, you're out of luck. You can't be a good Christian. They are saying is you cannot love your money. You have to love God. And there's actually a lot of psychology that's been done in the last 10 or 15 years that points to this actually and says that if you love wealth it ruins everything else in your life it throws your perspective all out of whack you lose relationships you lose family you're miserable and actually i just read a study recently that said all billionaires should probably be in Alcoholics Anonymous or some similar program because the only way you can acquire that much wealth is to be addicted. The only way you can acquire that much wealth is for it to devote all of your time and effort to it. And at that point, you have more money than you can ever spend, so there's no reason actually to get it other than you've got some inborn desire that you're fulfilling. And Paul would say that those people are wasting their lives. The psalm says that even though other people will say that they're wonderful and they did great things with their life, when it comes down to it, when they die, they're just dead, just like everyone else. And they can't take any of that wealth with them. So what is the point? But more importantly, what the psalm says, and I think people miss this often, says we can never ransom ourselves or deliver to God the price of our life for the ransom of our life is so great that we should never have enough to pay it. God values each and every one of us so much that we could acquire all the money in the world and it wouldn't be as much value as God holds for us. And so if we could acquire all the money in the world, and it still wouldn't be as much value as God holds for us, then shouldn't we value ourselves as highly as God values us? Shouldn't we realize that all of that money isn't the true worth of who we are? Paul says that if we shun that love of money, and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness, we will live the life which we are called to. 
That's what Jesus is saying when he says we cannot serve two masters. We cannot serve God as well. We have to pick one. We have to pick one that we value. But he's not saying that if you have wealth, you can't be a good Christian. In fact, Scripture is full of people who have wealth, who are good followers of God. The difference is, if you love God, you're not going to worry as much about the money. And in fact, you're probably going to use the money to help people the way God wants you to. Because the most important thing in your life is your love for God. You're not as, as worried about the money. And we know that just having wealth doesn't bring happiness. Gosh, how many of our reality shows are about that? All of the Real Housewives shows. Mm -hmm. Every one of those people is rich and none of them are happy. If just having money made you happy, we would know it by now. It doesn't. But I guarantee you, all of us have met somebody who has next to nothing, who has love of God at the center of their life, and is happy all the time. I have. I'm sure you have as well. It's where our focus is that's important. These passages aren't saying that if you have money, you can't be a good Christian. You just can't be in love with your money and be a good Christian. But I think the idea that we're worth more than any money we could ever accumulate <coughs> is the real takeaway. We love ourselves as much as God loves us. And we're going to love God back. The only way you can have that kind of love is if God put it in you in the first place. And we're going to feel it and we're going to want to love God right back. And when we focus ourselves on God and on love of God, then the rest of this stuff just not as important. Please stand as you are able and affirm with me the words of our faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God for God, life for life, true God for true God.
draw people in your daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, Jennifer Rell, our bishop, and Sean Rutledge, our vicar, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and His Church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Ron. Jeannie, Chad, Trisha and her family, Tom, Deb, Ken, Marianne, Sandra, Cindy and her family, Ron, Wayne, Elaine, Helen, Rick, and all those that we raise up to you now. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Hear our spoken thanksgiving and those unspoken. We will exalt you, O God our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially. For Terry Lynn Fieber, David Wayne Dyer, Danny Wiles, and Alice Berbici. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you? O oh God, our rock and our refuge, hear the prayers of your people this day, both those here present and those joining us online. Keep us safe in your care and strengthen us with your grace, that we may pray to you faithfully and love one another boldly, following the example of Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive and restore and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ that we may abide in your love and serve only in your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. It's just you.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give and thanks and grace. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with saint peter and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through jesus christ our lord the firstborn of all creation the head of the church and the author of our salvation by him and with him and in him in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever amen and now, our Savior Christ has taught us we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is 
kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and good thanksgiving.
God's blessing be with you. Christ's peace be with you. And the Spirit's outpouring be with you. Now and always. Amen. Amen.